all right? Okay. So, uh, welcome to Malos Langa, who's visiting as a visiting scholar at the center uh, this semester um, from uh, University of Witzvaterstrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. Um, we met last year when I was uh, in Johannesburg, and, um, and he indicated an interest in coming to uh, visit us, so I was really excited about that, and now here he is. So, uh, he's going to talk a little bit about his research today, um, which both is substantively interesting, but also methodologically really interesting, because um, he's using a, a kind of a new method um, of using, letting, you know, giving guys cameras and letting them record their lives. So that's going to be kind of interesting. So without any further ado, Malos, we're all waiting for you. Okay. Thanks, 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 Michael, for the, the introduction. Um, I mean, as you can all see, that's the <clears throat> title of my talk, uh, Benefits of Using Photography in Research in Mass Communities, a Case Study of Young Men in, in South Africa. And maybe as a way of getting into this like my topic, it's better to do like a brief, brief, like my introduction of who I am, so that later you're able to make sense of some of the comments that I'll be making. Um, which is very interesting. I've had a lot of people the last two weeks saying I'm a sociologist and I'm a sociologist. I'm not a sociologist. <laughs> I'm a psychologist by profession. But I spend 90 to 98% of my time with sociologists. And you'll see this later. I mean, even in terms of like one brief. Then after qualifying as a psychologist, I worked for the Department of Military, like no veterans, um, sort of working with young men who during apartheid were actively involved in the anti-apartheid struggle. And many of them had gone through like no exile. So them coming back, after 1994, it was quite difficult for them to be reintegrated back into their communities. So obviously I did a lot of work with them, and obviously as a psychologist, the work was mainly like no therapy. And I guess my interest like around like no masculinity started when I started working with this like no population, where I wrote a few articles around what I call the intractability of militarized like no masculinities. So from there, obviously, I moved in the last like a few years, where I was also working in prison, and and obviously the again the, the interest like around like you know, masculinity was quite like you know very 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 strong, and it's only during that time when I came across I guess the work of like you know Cornell and Michael and many like you know, other other people. So obviously, in terms of this 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 work. Um, that's what it was. That middle button, I think, is the one. Yeah? Uh, okay. Ah, there we go. So, in, in terms of this, the, the, reason, the reason I'm here, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm working on a, on a book and which I started working on it in the last, like, you know, two, two weeks since I've arrived here. And that's the whole purpose of my, like, my visit. And I'll be talking to, like, Michael about this. And obviously, I mean, I'll use this uh, presentation as an opportunity, I mean, to get a feedback on this book, manuscript. It's based on uh, eight years to nine years of, like, you know, field work with a group of men. At that time, these were boys whom I interviewed while they were still in high school. So between the age of fifteen and and between the age of like thirteen and fifteen. And now they are between the age of twenty three and twenty seven. So I met them when they were in high school. I did interviews with them and since then I followed them like you know, through. So I guess my main interest was to understand at that time the subjective meanings that young boys made about what it meant to be a boy in the context of a township. 
And obviously here, as you can see, I mean, the working title of this, this book, it's Township Masculinities, Contestations, and Raptures and Resistance. I mean, resistance is the term that I go to here. Uh, when I was here at Stonebrook, like in you know, the university in the last like two weeks. So I felt it needed to be added into, into the title. So basically, I mean, briefly, a township, if you know in Brazil, in Brazil they are called like no favelas. Uh, in South Africa, it is sort of like you no know, informal, formal, sort of like you no know, settlements. But obviously, I mean, townships in South Africa are characterized by a high level of like you no know, crime, gangsterism, and all kinds of like you no know, social like you no know, problems. So obviously my interest was to go into this like, setting in wanting to understand how boys then in this context, characterized by all these social ills, negotiate what it means to be like a young, like you know, boy. But with a specific like you know, focus on feelings and emotions involved in the negotiation of masculine like you know, identities. So obviously, like I said, in my background, obviously I'm a psychologist, I'm interested in the emotional sort of like you no know, processes of what it means to be like a young boy. So obviously at the theoretical level, I use what I call a psychosocial like, you know, approach. Drawing both, and, and that's how I got into the sociology of like, masculinities. On the social, obviously here I draw on Michael, Cornell, Jeff Hen, and many others like most work. And then in terms of the psychological, I work closely with a guy in the UK by the name of Stephen Frosch. He, he writes a lot on psychoanalysis and, and, and masculinity. But my interest here was to then identify the contradictory desires and conflicts and emotional compromises that township boys experience in negotiating dominant. Dominant, but my interest was more on non-dominant like the masculinities. In terms of, you know, um, what are the emotions that uh, come, 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 come with, with the left. So obviously in terms of this, like, you know, approach, it's, it's a combination of, like, you no know, sociological analysis of, like, you know, masculinity and the psychoanalytic uh, understanding of, like, you know, masculinity. Where in terms of this approach, the masculine subject is seen as both social and psychological, with behavior influenced by the interplay between the external social and internal psychological, like, you know, processes. And in the book, like, you no know, manuscript, I, I, I try and, and combine, like, you know, these two approaches in terms of, like, you know, recognizing that it is important that internal psychological processes are analyzed and interpreted within the context of which the subject is located. And obviously here, you're talking about the sociological sort of, like, you know, context. That you cannot talk about the masculine, like, you know, subject without making any reference to the history and other cultural um, sort of like, you know, uh, uh, practices. So obviously, I mean, a lo lot of work has been done. Um, I mean, in, in, in the UK, a lot of work has been done around the subject. And in, in Australia, I met Martino, who has done a lot of work. And also here in the US, I mean, uh, the person that has done like a brilliant work that I've read, it would be Pasco. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, her work I found it to be like you know, quite like interesting, like around like you no know, schooling and, and masculinity. Mm -hmm. So yes, in terms of this, I mean, I was building on on their work um, uh, in terms of like you know uh, schools as a site of like you no know, research. I recruited like a group of like you no know, boys around me from four schools in this township in South Africa. And obviously the methodology is that each boy was given like a disposable camera. And this was in 2007. 2007, not a lot of people like at that time uh, had, had cameras, uh, had cell phones with cameras. So obviously at that time, to give these young boys disposable like you know, camera was a, was a big thing for them. Initially, I wanted like a group of like you know, 25 like my boys. But given the fact that they considered this to be like an incentive of like you know, some sort, I had like about 40 young boys <laughs> being interested, you know, to be part of like you know, this this study. So basically the instruction was very simple. Was that with a disposable camera, and the unfortunate part with a disposable camera, 
you cannot rewind and say I want to retake like you know, the photo. So obviously I had to meet with them, do a lot of like you know, explanation on how do you use like a disposable like you know, camera. But you only have a limited number of like you know, photos. You can only take 27 like you know, photos. So obviously the theme was like you know, very simple. That the instruction was my life as a boy in the new like you know, South Africa. And that was the simple sort of like instruction. I didn't have like no questions that I gave them. So out of that, I said, I'm giving you two weeks. And some boys after two weeks, they said, no, I'm still thinking about uh, the photos that I want to take. Can you give me another two weeks? And then it will be four weeks. And others, within a day, they're already done. So there were all these like, you know, differences. And obviously, in terms of the quality, it, it differed in terms of the time that others like no took. And others had to like, you know, sit and think like no thoroughly. How do I want to represent like no myself, like as a boy living in this like no context? Then of course, after they've done their, after they've taken their photos, then I went and collected the disposable cameras and then printed out the photos. And then obviously I had my copies and then I gave them their copies and also put them in an album. So in, 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 in total, as I was doing this research, which is a data that I've not analyzed. So obviously, Sam, for me to do this study, I had spoken to the school principals, uh, parents, like, you know, teachers, and some of the boys took their cameras to schools. And then I had girls then come in to me and say, what about us? What does it mean <laughs> to be a girl living in this, like, you know, area? And I had no choice because the boys were also <laughs> taking pictures of girls and girls also. So I also have a set of data taken by girls whom I also <coughs> have to interview, <laughs> uh, which I've, ne I've never like, you know, used like, you know, that like, you know, data. So in total, I mean, I have more than 1,000 like, you know, photos uh, taken out of this like, you know, research like, you know, project. And currently, I'm planning like, a big like, you know, exhibition where because some of the photos are, are very interesting. Um, where we'll do a big exhibition with some of the boys now, some are young men, and they're looking back, they're like, did they really take this photo? And obviously each photo has, has, a, has, a, has a narrative. And then what I did, I did individual interviews with all these like my boys. So obviously what we'll do, we'll go through each photo, and then they'll say, this is my photo, and then they'll give a reason why they took that photo and what that photo uh, sort of like no meant, like no for them. And after the individual interviews, then I organized like no group interviews. But the instruction for group interviews was quite like no simple. To say, choose the best five photos that you want to share with other boys in a group. So obviously by then, I've noted all the stories. I mean, to say, this is what they said about this, like, no photo. So in the group, I also wanted to observe if whether the story will remain the same or will the story be different. And even that in terms of the photos that they choose to share with other boys, like, you know, in the group. And of course, it was quite interesting that the stories that were shared in the individual interviews were not the same as the stories that were shared in the group, and also the photos that they chose, it, it was quite interesting in terms of the criteria, because later I had to then ask them. Transcribed the group interview, transcribed the individual interview, and met with this boy, gave them what they said in the group interview, gave them what they said in the individual interview, and there are all these like, no differences. <laughs> and then how do we then talk about all these sort of like differences in terms of what they said in the um, individual like you know, interview. So I'll just run through like you know, some of some of the photos like you not know, taken. So of course, I mean when you look at it, you're like, okay, well this boy is now playing with my disposable like you know cameras and everything. And obviously, I mean here it was like about like you no know, movies and everything. But something also emerged out of this. And, and like around access to pornographic like you know, material, you know, through this like you know um, uh, photo. Oh, I don't know how 
to go back now. Sorry. So, so obviously, I mean, they also, you can imagine, these are like my young boys, there will be a lot of, lot of cars, and obviously, I mean, specific cars, and, but the key things that emerged out of photos with cars was only a car linked with, like, no successful, like, no masculinity, and, and also this, this cars, I mean, like, if you look at this, like, no photo, like, no BMW, for them, it was not like, no BMW, it was like, beauty my wife and a lot would be said you know to say that's what bmw like you know, stands for and it would be a mercedes-benz but not just a mercedes-benz it would be amg all money gone you know? <laughs> so there, there will be all these like you no know, meanings that they give to like you know, some of this like you no know, cars but also what came to the fore was like around working class like you no know, boys feeling emasculated for not having parents that have like no cars. So obviously because they did not have like no parents that had cars, for them it was, I cannot then attract like no young, young, young girls. And obviously this, 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 this work relates with my other work, where at this point in time in South Africa, I mean post-1994, you had an emergence of like no black middle class through black economic uh, like no empowerment and through access to like no political like no power. So in the last like no two years, we we have been having a lot of so-called inverted commas uh, service delivery protests. But these are like no protests against like no politicians that politicians are living large while the majority of people are living in squalors. And then I started interviewing some of the protesters, and then all these like no dynamics were also coming to the fore. To say I don't have a car. They drive like no fancy cars. And because they drive fancy cars, I cannot have omozi. Omozi meaning own, having a household, getting married, and having children, and so on and so forth. And obviously, I mean, with young boys, you can imagine they'll have pictures of girls, and that's why girls said, no, we can't be taking pictures of, and we also want to have disposable cameras. Pretty girls, like, you know, at school, but also the key theme here was like around love and intimacy, uh, which was like also another theme that came to the fore. And the issue of HIV and AIDS and multiple partners, uh, women or young girls preferring to date like you know, older men. But then the other issue, which at times get associated with like you no know, campuses, the issue of like you no know, sexual assault uh, in, in high schools was also like a very big like no theme um, that like you know came came um, to the fore. And obviously here, I mean, the last two weeks in Michael's class, like around the church. I mean, obviously, this this boy had taken this picture of him going to church and everything. Uh, church going boys. The issue of like no sexual abstinence. I mean, what amazed me with the readings that we've been doing the last two weeks. I mean, it, it feels like in, in the U.S., I mean, sexual abstinence, it feels like it's a big, like, no movement in terms of the readings that I've done. In, 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 in South Africa, I mean, the issue of virginity, it is more cultural than uh, religious, you know, and it is more with girls, but girls of a particular location, more in... KZN, which is Osmo Natal, like no province. You have older women uh, checking young girls if they are virgins or not. <coughs> but that, that does not like no apply to like no young young boys. So obviously you had a lot of some, some of the boys <laughs> categorizing themselves as as Abazaran, as like no Christians. And also tensions and ambivalencies that arose like as a result, as a result of that. And obviously another thing was like around uh, this tension between, you know, boys that were in gangs and boys that were going to uh, sort of like no church. And then the previous, like, you know, picture is about 
like you know, uh, fashion. I mean, because to go back, I think it would be just like around shoes, shoes, music, uh, clothes, um, and styli stylizing of the body, being fashionable, not being fashionable, the tension like around music, I uh, listening to hip hop, house music, uh, white music, and all this like you know, politics, and also how this politics related with like you not know, last like no differences. So APSA, APSA is a, it's a bank. This is a picture of like a, a, a bank. So obviously money for some of the boys was a key marker of what it meant to be like a real boy and access to money and how also this linked with young boys uh, joining gangs. You know, are you, are you part of a gang? And obviously some of the gangs they, they operate in terms of like, our mission is to hijack like no cars. Our mission is to when, you know, steal in people like most houses. And, and then others were like, I'm not going to be part of a gang. And, and then how do you resist like, you know, that, that pressure for you not to be like a member of a gang? And obviously, I mean, some boys took pictures of them cleaning at home. But interestingly, some of these like of photos, were not shared like in the group. You know, this boy said so much about like you know this picture. And even the following like you no know, picture, cooking and everything, how this links with gender equality and men, you know, assisting at home and so on and so forth. But none of these like you no know, pictures were shared in the focus group. Mm -hmm. And then later when I go back to them to like you no know, discuss why were these like my photos not shared and so on and so forth? It was it was quite sort of like you know, interesting. And then you also have like you no know, photos of like you no know, books, which again it's around schooling and masculinity and being in the borderland. You know, Martino talks about being in the borderland. I would not share a photo like this that I'm a nerd, I study, you know, I play around at school, and then later in the evening I go back home, I do my schoolwork, and then when the teacher does this, I'll be doing this. You know, all these like you no know, tensions that like you no know, come 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 with it. What was very interesting, there were, there were pictures of like you no know, mothers. But none of the boys had a picture of a father. Hmm. So this became like a big theme in my conversation with these like you no know, boys. Where a lot of them spoke about like you no know, absent, like you no know, fathers, and I've written a lot of like you know articles like around uh, this this like you no know, subject of like you know uh, fathering and fatherhood, you know to a point where like now there's there's a big like you know uh, policy like you no know, process where I mean as a result of this work and many other people's work, um, there's a recognition that there is like you know, something that needs to be done like around the issue of like you no know, absent like you know fathers. So obviously briefly, I mean as a way of concluding like you know, my, my, my presentation, when you look at this, is that there are so many benefits of using photography, like as a research like you no know, tool. So in this participants take the role of an expert like you no know, guide, leading the interviewer through the content of the photos. I as I went to meet them for the first time, I was quite anxious about, you know, because already I took the disposable camera, I printed out like you no know, photos, I look at some of the photos, I'm like, what is going on here? Why was this photo taken? Uh, what is this boy going to say about this photo? And others said, no, do not put my photos in the album, I'll put them in the way I want to tell, like, you know, the story. Mm -hmm. So in a way, obviously I go in, into an interview, not knowing like you know, anything. And they take me through each and every like you no know, photo. And with the, some of the photos, I mean when you look at when I saw the sign of like an APSA bank, I'm like, okay, I mean now these boys must be playing, like you know, with my disposable <laughs> cameras. <laughs> and then what was said about that photo and many other photos, it was like you no know, mind like you no know, blowing. So obviously also participants take an active role and a participatory role in the data like my collection. I mean, they take a lead in collecting the data. Remember, they live in this like no township, like no space. 
and others would want to take a picture of a particular car. And this boy said, you know, I was looking for this car and I couldn't find it. And I had to go to this like, you know, shopping mall and search for this car. And finally I got it. I even had to ask the owner, please may I take the photo of your picture. <laughs> and then the owner was like, why do you want to take the picture? And others had houses that they remember they're living in a township where many of them are living in checks and then wanted like a big house with like a swimming pool and obviously there's no way they can find such a house in the township where they live and then it's a question of now i need to make a trip and this boy started narrating going to all these like no houses and obviously this is a suburban like an you know, area as he's working on the street he gets stopped mm. by the private security like in officials, what are you doing in the area? Because he's looking, it's like, no, I don't want to take a picture of the south. He looks at the other house, and obviously he's looked at, like, you know, suspiciously. What are you here? What are you doing? And he has to, like, you know, explain to say, I'm doing this project, and then this is what I want to do, and so on and so forth. So obviously, using photos is, is not intrusive. I mean, they, they had to, like, you know, decide uh, what, what to say, what not to say. Um, and the process is open, like you know, ended, and the 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 whole research, like you know, process. I mean, it's not like I met them, and after that, I have like a set of like you know, questions. It, it it was like a long process. You know, the first is the process of teaching them how to use like a disposable like you know camera, and then you go through, you know, the instructions. I come back, I collect the camera, I come back, we meet, we put the photos in the album. So obviously, I mean, it helps in establishing uh, the, the rapport, you know, um, in, term, in terms of that. So like I said, I mean, the, initially, that was part of the plan, that I will do individual interviews, do focus groups, and that is the end of the process. So when I started like, you know, seeing the discrepancies between what was said in the individual and what was said in the focus group, I said, okay, do the last like, you know, individual you know, interviews, sort of like as follow-ups. And follow-ups became another follow-up, another follow-up over a period of eight to nine years. So in terms of this, others then started keeping personal diaries, where they started like, you know, reflecting about you know, questions and questions and questions. Suddenly you get a call to say, look, so what I'll do after each, and each interview, I go back, I do the transcript, I email them the transcript. They read the transcript, I read the transcript. I go through the transcript, I scribble my notes, they scribble their notes, and then we go through the conversation. And obviously that leads to another interview and another interview and another interview. And then the photos, the process changed. They were no longer using disposable cameras. And I had to be very strict, I mean, to say, if you're using your phone, because now in the era of selfies and everything, I may end up getting hundred, like, no photos. <laughs> I said for each and every follow-up interview, you can only share four to five, like, you know, photos. So obviously now, they're like, you no know, young, like, you know, adults. Some of them are like, you no know, fathers now. And these are the pictures that you get. And remember, when they were like you know, young boys, they spoke about the absent like you no know, fathers, and the pain and the suffering associated with that, and a lot of like you no know, fantasies of them wanting to be different like you no know, fathers as compared to the absent like you no know, fathers. <laughs> and and others are able to live up to that. Others are crying, and there are all kinds of like you know tensions and difficulties and contradictions and painful processes like you know, associated like you no know, with with that. And others who call to say my girlfriend or my partner is like you no know, pregnant. And then we talk about uh, now this partner being like you no know, pregnant. Um, and others entering like you know the world of like you no know, work, now dealing with issues of race and racism in the workplace, uh, dealing with work related like you know stressors and the so called like you no know, black tax. You know that now I'm working, I need to support uh, my extended, like, you know, family, like, you know, members. And then, some along the way, out of this, like, you know, sample, I had 
three boys also coming out, you know, to say I'm gay, and being the first person being told about, about that, and helping them to deal with all those like, emotions and feelings, and now, with this boy, being this well-known, like, you know, stylist, like, you know, now. And I remember him saying, yeah, I want to be a hairstylist. And we had to go back to that interview. Where in the interview, I said, but if you want to be a hairstylist, other boys will think, like, you know, you're gay. And he said, no, I'm not gay. There's no way I can be gay. But that's what I want to do and everything. And now reflecting back, he said, yeah, that was like the moment where I was not sure and so on and so forth. Uh, but now being being uh, sort of like, you know, proud, um, sorry, that is, that is gay, but I'll just like, you know, like, you know. So the, the conclusion that I, that I reach, like, you know, out of, out of this, 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 this work, is that there are a lot of, like, you know, costs of, of being like a man, uh, that some, 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 some boys, when I look through their life, like, you know, span, until the age where they are, like, you know, right now, you, you see, like, you no know, voices of, like, you no know, resistance and resistance there and there. But this, like, you no know, voices, hence, like, you know, my title, are characterized by, like, you no know, feelings of contradictions, uh, feelings of, like, you no know, rapture, and feelings of, like, you no know, ambivalence. So the argument that I make at a practical sort of, like, you no know, level is that when I look at them, is that interviews, meeting with them regularly, did serve like as a safe like no space, maybe relating with what you said like no Michael this morning, like around for them now because then I was then sort of like you know we we using uh, these meetings as therapy uh, sort of like no sessions. One can argue to say it was but not therapy in a traditional sort of like no sense, you know because they will use the space as an opportunity, you know, for them to reflect to say. I want to be a different man. Uh, this is what I want to be. But now and then, I get all these like no temptations. And this is what I hear. And this is what I find it difficult. And, and what you begin to see is that they, they, there's so much like no pain in, in being these different like no men. So there are all these public like no messages uh, that get sent out there. Uh, we want a uh, good men, okay? But we do not then explain the process of what it entails to be like a good man. So obviously in my own private space, I'm trying to be like a good man, but there are also moments of failure. There are moments of ambivalency. There are all kinds of like, you know, fears. There are all kinds of like, you know, anxieties related with being the so-called like a different like a man. So in, 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 my, in my work, then I argue, I mean, to say it's easy. And, and with some of the papers that I've, like, you know, reviewed, like, around, like, you know, working with men and with all these, like, you no know, campaigns, like, around, like, you know, gender-based, like, you no know, violence, you, you hear, like, you know, some of them. I mean, to say, yeah, I mean, it happened. I nearly lost it. You know, my partner and I, we're not seeing eye to eye. And then we get into the conversa conversation. Uh, what happened and everything. Yeah, there was a moment where I nearly, and then we'll reflect like on that. And then, you know, and then you begin to recognize like you know, something, I mean, to say, this is the message that I hear in terms of like you no know, public like you no know, campaigns. But privately, uh, this is what happens. But now I have this like you no know, resource, resource that I'm able to like you no know, draw on, but ultimately it is not like you no know, easy. And that's how I want to conclude like, my presentation. Thank you. Floor is open for you all. What do you think influences what young men in South Africa think of like what is masculine? Like when they look at these nice cars, like what do you think? Like because where, where do they where do these kids get this like notion from that having like these SUVs like makes you masculine, for example? Like where do you think they get that from? Take one question at a time. Whatever you want. Now let, let me take maybe two. Okay. Oh. Um, I just have a question about were there any of the boys you interviewed, uh, you said at the start that when they were young, were 
ended up make, maybe going down paths like joining a gang and then their lives ended up not you know, very successful or if they won, like, I just wanted to know about if there are any stories yeah. like that. I mean, they, and I will still be consulting with, with Michael, like around in terms of, like, you know, this book. I mean, I have rich, rich, like, you know, personal life, like, you know, stories where others had said, this is what I want to be, like, you know, when I grew up and everything. And when you look at them at this present moment, it's the opposite of that. Some along the way got shot. I, there are about three boys that got shot and, and died and because of the, the, the environment. Mm -hmm. And there are two uh, that are serving long prison like no sentences. And there are those that went fires like no completing the grade 12, which I'm not sure what you call it in, in the US, sort of like no metric yeah. before you go to college. Yeah. And then they completed the college and university uh, degrees, and there are those that were not able to go to uh, to go to colleges, despite the fact that they completed like no dormitory. So they, they are all these like no differences, and some are working uh, very good jobs, and some are working not very good jobs. Uh, like about four now are like no married, and some have children, some don't have children. You know, there are all these sort of like you know, differences and differences. And, and in the book, I'm struggling to put all their stories like you know, together. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a way that it would be very like you know, coherent, you know. So in terms of like, you know, that, that question, I mean, they, they did struggle. When I gave them the disposable like you know, cameras, initially when we were going through the instructions, it was like, you know, what does it mean to be a boy? No, then they were laughing. It's to be a boy. And to be a boy is to be a boy. And for them, it was like, but when they started like you know, engaging with, with the first like you no know, interview, many of them had to go back after the first like you no know, interview, after the group like you no know, meeting with the follow up, and it's where they started like you know thinking and thinking and started like you no know, questioning a lot of things, and then the question was like around if you do not make like you no know, all these like you no know, follow ups and follow ups and follow ups, what would have like you no know, happen with them? Because then constantly they had to reflect and reflect and reflect and reflect. And even the three that are in prison, I still continue to go and see them. You know, the other two before he got like arrested, I remember I got like about hundred like no missed calls like no from him. And then suddenly when I tried to call him back, the phone was off. And I went to like you know, his house, hey, I've been getting me and it's like no, he's arrested and he's in jail. And obviously now I had to go to jail. Who are you? And I had to explain myself. Of course, I worked in prison, and he said the prison where I worked. So it made it very easy. And then I still continue to go and see him, and he's writing me a lot of detailed, detailed, like no notes, and just like no reflecting again on what it means to be like no here. Yeah, so I have a question uh, regarding the first one. Um, because I'm assuming that the research was done in Johannesburg, which is more ethnically uh, diverse compared to other provinces in South Africa. So I was wondering um, if the boys probably also came from different ethnic tribes, and if there were actually any differences in terms of how masculinity was constructed depending on the tribe that the boys actually belonged to. So for example, uh, initiation, uh, which is something that some boys actually go through. Um, were there any differences in terms of? No, interestingly, I mean, they they all living in this country, like no context. The, the issue of like no ethnicity or tribe was not like no very very strong. You know, to say I'm Zulu, I'm Tosa, I'm Venda, I'm Shangani, I'm Pedi, it, it did not come mm. to the fore. You know, the, the only thing that was like no mentioned, it was with this like no gay boy, where he he. I mean, which was very interesting because when I met him, he was extremely shy. But now he's out in the open, he's very flamboyant, and, and he, he engages in all these disruptive sort of like activities. And we're saying at some point, I mean, he's Tosa. And he said, look, I'm thinking of going to the initiation sort of like school. But he never went. And his reason was, I just want to go and and just disrupt like you know that like moment and had a lot to say about 
him being closer, but not having gone to the initiation school, and where his father felt he needed to go, and he said, what is the benefit of me, like, you know, going to the initiation, like, you know, that is the only moment where, sort of like, um, a cultural, like, you no know, practice was brought, like, you know, to the fore. Uh, in other instances, it was a question of, um, since this, like, you no know, interview, I'm interested in knowing who's my father, and then, like, about two to three boys, I mean, went back and started, like, you know, asking their mothers, you know, who's my father? And then mothers also, I mean, in some cases I also had to go and intervene. Mothers did not know how to respond, like, you know, to this, like, no boys. And in one instance, it was a question of, okay, we'll try and help you find your father. And then he found his father, and then it was a question of, we need to appease the ancestors, and the big, you know, cultural, like, you know, ceremony was sort of, like, you know, organized, and then there were all kinds of, like, rituals that were performed. So, um... You talked about how the silences or the pictures that weren't taken ended up being a really important component of these boys' lives, specifically um, the lack of pictures of fathers. Were there any other missing things that you thought that you would find in these photos that didn't come up that also played a big role in their lives? I mean, the, the photos like around books, mm -hmm. uh, cleaning, and cooking, were, were, were quite were quite interesting, in the sense that in the in the individual interviews, a lot was said about them. In the group, they disappeared. Mm -hmm. In some of the follow-ups, they also disappeared. But some, especially the ones that are married now, mm -hmm. they're making reference back to those like photos. Mm -hmm. You know, because now the other element that I sort of like you know, added was to, in some instances, I'm talking to their mothers now. I'm talking to their partners, like, you know, as well, because they're like, yeah, I'm a good father and everything, but I feel, okay, let me go and talk to your partner. What kind of a partner are you? How does your partner experience you? And then, yeah, he, she experiences me in this way, this is how we relate and everything, and then, would you mind if I go and talk to your, to your partner? And some agreed, and all of them sort of, like, agreed, you know, for me to also go and talk to... Like, no, their partners. So are you so seeing they, a re-emergence of yeah. these type of photos? You said you're still yeah. getting photos, right? So now are yeah. you seeing... That's interesting. Yeah. And, and, and obviously, for each... I, I, this guy, I mean, he's, he's, he's brilliant in terms of transcribing, mm -hmm. like, you know, my, my, my interviews. So all of them have big files of all these, like, you know, transcripts and transcripts and transcripts. And also, have, like, for each boy, I have, like, a big, like, you no know, file. And they'll all, always be making reference to this. Do you remember this interview that we once ahead? And then I'm like, okay, which one? And then they're like, this one. And some even remember the dates. And then we go back to that, like, no interview. But I also like do the same as I'm like, no interview, them, where they are, all these, like, no differences. really in a reflexive way about your credentials in psychology and your uh, the duration of these relationships um, in interviews with your subjects. So you touched on it a little bit about um, it kind of being counseling sometime. Um, can you talk a little about how you managed that as a researcher? I mean, obviously, <coughs> the, the few articles that I've written on that, I mean, and especially in, in, in psychology, I mean, the, the, the term like, you know, counter-transference and transference are sort of like big, 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 big terms. But normally they are used like in clinical, like, you know, settings. Some of them, I mean, when I, when I went in 2007, I was driving like a VW car. So they, they, they had a picture of like, you know, my car, like, you know, some of them. And obviously, I was in my early, uh, no, late, sort of like, you know, uh, 20s or early 30s, whatever. But I was sort of like a fairly young, okay? So, so obviously, I mean, the, the issue, it was them also talking to me before I get into, like, you know, myself. And some, it was the issue of, you know, the, the whole thing, I mean, the, the few articles that I've also written, like, around brotherhood and everything, with the issue of 
like no absent like no fathers uh, links with like you know absent like you no know, brothers like in a township you find that the, the whole family is scattered around the township you know you, it's 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 a shake and at times it's a shake which is which is a two room it's a room and, and a kitchen and then a brother will be renting another bedroom and then they can spend like you know, almost like a month even two months without having seen the brother and so on and so forth so so obviously there are all this counter transferential like you know, reactions of now having this male like you know, person who is interested in their stories and paying a lot of attention and, and listening to them and so on and so forth. But on the other hand, obviously the, there's a question that I'm also trying to like you know answer like you know in, 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 in my head in terms of you know what it means to be like a young boy, you know, living in this like you know, space. And now and then when I go to, because it's Alexandra, like no township, when I go there driving my car, it, it, it has a, a, a tracker from, from the security sort of like no company. Because it is classified as a dangerous like no area, immediately when I enter into the township, I'll get a call from the tracking like no company. It's all well. You're entering like a danger zone. And yeah. All is well. A, till now, when I get there, these days I get an SMS. Call this number. Is everything fine? We, we got a signal that we have entered like a dangerous like no space. Mm -hmm. But now people get like no surprised when I say to them. In fact, I feel more safer in Alex than to be in a place where I live. In Alex, I can leave my car not even locked. Nothing will happen to it. And this is based on my interviews with the Slagno like, no boys, mm -hmm. who are also like, you know, gangs and everything. They said, no, we don't just like, you no know, target people in, in, in Alex. And, and in fact, even the crime stats that were released, I think on Monday, uh, last mm -hmm. week, like, you no know, back at home, they, they show like, you no know, that pattern. That in fact, though we have this uh, perception that townships are dangerous, in fact, a lot of crimes, especially property crimes, do not happen in townships. Mm -hmm. In townships, it's mainly street robberies, where people come and grab your phone. <laughs> but it's not like where they will come and hijack like your car. Um, so, 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 so obviously, I mean, the, the, there was that. With the boy, the, this other boy uh, is the one who was cleaning the house, the one who was like arrested. I mean, in total, there were like 40, 42 boys. I regarded him as one of the best boys that I've ever interviewed, you know. So when I got a call uh, to say he's, he's arrested, and I couldn't like make sense. Even now, I mean, I went uh, to see him, and he's been sentenced like you know, 15 years imprisonment for armed robbery. And, and obviously when he was still on trial, because I was careful, you know, not to ask him like no certain questions. But then I went to his like no sentencing, when he was like no sentence. And things that they said, what the magistrate said of things that he did, the two did not sort of like no connect. Mm. And then I went and I started like no talking to him. Initially, when he was still on trial, he said, no, nah, I've not done that, I've not done that. Uh, you know, these guys are framing me because they were a group of guys and everything. But now he's coming out in the open and he's writing. And he's also reflecting. So I even had to make a plan to go to his house, take the whole file, so that he can read like the whole file. And he's writing, and he's the one with like a Christian sort of like no sign. You know, he's cleaning, and then he had that Christian um, like no photo, going to the mountain, and him being like a Christian boy, and now having committed this heinous like no crime. So obviously, it did, it did get into me. You know, um, and yeah. Okay. Um, I'm curious about some of the contrasts uh, that you described. Um, so, uh, you know, you, you, you had about, as you said, there were over a thousand images. So, uh, my, first, my first thing is what was not present. One of the things that I noticed as you showed us those images, and then you described other images that weren't there, but you, that they also took, 
Um, there were a lot of images of things. Shoes, you said. Uh, clothes, cars, money. Um, there's a lot of things that, that, so when asked to describe their lives, the boys' narratives tended to be about what, the aspirational part, mm. things I want, mm. nice car, mm. money, mm. Not, you know, Air Jordans, whatever. Mm. Um, so my first contrast would be, I, I think you definitely should do the research with the girls, mm. because I'd be curious to see if they have any people in them. Because one, I think there may be some uh, diff a gender difference in what they choose to photograph to tell you about their life. I mean, I was thinking, like, what would I, what pictures would I take? Well, I, first thing I would do is I would take pictures of my mom and dad and sister and our house and etc. But I didn't see any of that. So I'm what, so I'm curious about what they chose because you're asking them. I mean, methodologically, you're asking them to use the camera as a way of constructing a narrative. Mm. And then you extract this narrative, this is my second question, mm. then you extract this narrative twice. Mm. Once when they talk to you directly, mm. and once in a focus group where they are then mm. talking about their images but a selected number mm. to other boys. Mm. So there they're constructing their identity through a, in a different context. So, so what they choose, you know, the differences between what they reveal to you and what they reveal to the focus group, that's also always of interest mm. because there's that brings up all of those questions about performativity and how you construct your masculinity vis-a-vis -vis other guys, their evaluations of you, they're your peers compared to evaluations from the the, the researcher, therapist, mm. or, or father figure type. So I'm just curious about um, about those contrasts, what's in the images, what they choose to represent their lives, what they don't choose to put in. Um, and so, for example, I expected when you showed us images, I expected to, 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 to know the answer to these questions that I don't know. For example, you say they were in townships, but these were townships that have paved roads, electricity, and plumbing, right? Yeah. Running water. Yeah. So they're not in permanent mm. settlements. They're not settlements, they're townships. They're formally yeah. circumscribed, they have they have their own police force, I mean, sort of like Soweto or, uh, uh, I mean. There are also like no shacks, yeah, but it's, it's, No shacks. There are shacks. There know, are shacks. Alex, it's, it's a mixture of houses. There were yeah. these like no apartheid, apartheid houses where people had yards. But then what happened, in one yard now, you find about eight to ten families living in one yard. I so there will be this house where it will be shared. Oh, because the rural-urban migration is yes. so intense. Yes, yes. Yeah, so you have, the, you know, some, some townships have those dorms where it's just yeah. single men. Yeah. Right, okay, okay. So, so it would be both what you would call a, a, a township, formal yeah. structured yeah. township, and also you know, sort of yeah. trailing off into permanent yeah. settlements, maybe yeah. not in permanent yeah. settlements. Okay. Yeah. It, it, those of you who don't know South Africa, these all have actual, it, they, these actually refer to formal things. Yeah. You know, a, a permanent settlement will have running water and electricity, but an impermanent one will not. I mean, it's, it's yeah. really... But in LX, they, they have. I mean, they it's, one of the, it's one of the oldest uh, but, townships in, in South Africa. But nobody took pictures of their place, at least that you showed yeah. us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My yeah. house. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so it's yeah. just so I'm curious about what they chose to show, yeah. and then what they chose to show you versus what they showed mm -hmm. chose to, chose to show. Sorry, yeah. others. That's my first. That's my first sort of big question. Mm -hmm. My second big question is: I want you to connect what you hear from these boys to your earlier work in with military masculinities and prison masculinities. And the reason I want you to do that is because I think there's something else about township life, life in post-apartheid South Africa, life in poverty, that connects to, I'm, I'm, I'm now way out of my depth because now I'm going to say something psychological, trauma. The military, prison, and poverty are all constructing masculinity in a framework of, of want, of trauma, of, of violence. All three are violent arenas. So, 
I just want you, you know, maybe as a psychologist explaining this to a sociologist, um, I want you to talk about the, 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 the your, your personal connection to what must be stories that you're hearing from these boys that remind you of the stories you heard in prison, that remind you of the stories you heard among the soldiers, um, of what was done to them, or the threat that lives around them. Um, and then, of course, if they documented that in any way, I'd be really curious. But those are my two big questions. I mean, I think you 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 spot on. I mean, in a sense that when you look at the at the photos, they're less they're less personal. It's about things and things that are external, but also things that are outside of Alexander. Yeah, you know, all of them went through like Nasantin. Nasantin. It's this expensive, exclusive, like, you know, suburb, which is five kilometers away from Alex. You know, all of them took a taxi to go and look for specific, like, you know, cars, specific, like, you know, houses and everything. Mm. So, basically, I, I, I write, like, around that, you know, I guess, you know, envy and, and, and fantasies. I mean, remember they were young, like, at that time. Mm -hmm. Fantasies about what the future... <laughs> Uh, may sort of like no brain, and then even in terms of like you know houses, which is very interesting, none of them had a picture of a shake, mm -hmm. and I never thought of it. I mean, I'll, I'll go back and try and maybe think think about that because none of them had a picture of a shake. Like I said, they they did not have like you know, even pictures of them sitting like as a family. Yeah. Having, having supper or uh, just like you know, sitting with their brothers and say, this is my brother and this is my sister and like, none of them had such a picture. Okay? So, so obviously, I mean, I never thought of it. I'll, I'll go back and try and like, think it, about it. It's just, you know, for, for us, it's, what's interesting is yeah. not only what's there and yeah. what they choose yeah. to tell you, but yeah. what's not there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and what and speculating about why it's yeah. not there. So 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 we are in 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 answering that, which is different as compared to their pictures, like you know, right now, mm. as like you know, young, like you know, adults, which are more right. sort of like you know, personal. You know, I mean, even now when I was here, I got a call from another boy. Hey, I have good news for you. My baby girl has been born, and then. I get photos and photos and photos and photos. <laughs> oh, so, oh, so when they're boys, they don't take pictures of the family, but when they become fathers, they, they completely are into it. Yeah, so they, there's and a shift. They, 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 there's a shift. But also here, in terms of, I mean, if, if you read this other paper that I've written, I mean, it's, it's a very emotional, like, you know, paper where they're talking about, like, you know, absent fathers and everything. And then when you listen to that, I mean, the, the trauma, the trauma that some of these boys have, like, you know, gone through, you sort of, like, you know, shake a bit, you know, to say, this is how they, like, you know, grew up and grew up and grew up. And these are the circumstances that they had to deal with, like, on a daily basis. So one can then argue to say, maybe there was a bit of dissociation. Because someone then, in one of the reviews, said, maybe what photography did was to leave the reality, the reality, like, at that time and create a fantasized sort of like no life you know and that's what you see i guess also like on facebook and where mm -hmm. people create like you know, all kinds of like no profiles and profiles and profiles mm -hmm. and now the struggle is about things that they said in terms of this future and this fantasy and now with the reality that they're faced with of lack of like no job opportunities uh, or precarious like no jobs um and 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 with dreams that they had and not wanting to stay in Alex but now still staying in Alex and having a job that can end like at any time and now having to live with that anxiety. You know, so I I I, I agree. I mean um, because even like at that time, when I was doing like around fantasies for fatherhood and everything, reviewers would come back, I mean, to say, yeah, it's, it's, it's typical of like my young boys. Of them saying, I don't want to be the same, like my father, you know, from Ephrodian and mm -hmm. Peter Bloss and Lacan and, 
you know, they will, they will agree with that. Ultimately, you would want to individuate from the father figure mm -hmm. and be like well, something else. You know, they, there's nothing new with that. But then, when I followed them up now, getting the good news, for some it was the good news, because some, while they were still in high school, they did impregnate, you know, other girls. And there's a section where I talk about being a teenage father and everything. But mm -hmm. some waited and now they are like waking and then their partners are like you know, pregnant. And, and, and then we go back. And they all go back. Mm -hmm. You know. And then the other criticism that I always get is that don't you think these boys, because they know that you 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 watching them, there's this gaze, you know, they need to account to you. Because then they were like, How did you choose them? I say I chose them randomly. Because when you read some of their stories, it's like, but these are like my model boys. You know, did you really find them in LX? I said, yeah, I, I found them in LX. Uh, did you choose them to say one boys that were embracing different like, no, voices? I'm like, no, it was random. It's boys that came to the fore, being interested in part of this. And, you know, because they like, they sound more insightful and more thoughtful and more like, you know, reflective. And how do you like, you know, make like, no sense of that? Actually, uh, question. Um, you mentioned the sense of envy when they talk about like, materialistic objects, but do you think this could also transfer through to when they talk about absentee fathers and when these kids grow up and they, they're very happy about the families that they have, do you think that they were envious of their father's position that they could have had if they stayed in the family? Do you think the uh, kids would have been envious of that? Yeah, I mean, this, this boy who is now in prison, I mean, I remember him saying, you know, when I become a father, I want to be a different father. Uh, but I don't want to be a father to a girl. I want to be a father to a boy child. I want this boy child to be me and have what I have not had. And that's exactly what he sort of like me said. Let me just let me add something to this. This is there's a there's a classic book a work in in sociology uh, called The Hidden Injuries of Class uh, by Senek and Cobb. And their argument when they interviewed middle class and working class men they found a real difference in the ways in which fathers talk about their sons. Now, now Molos is talking a little bit about the sons talking about their fathers, yeah. um, but, the, but working class fathers would say to their sons, don't be like me. I want you to do more than me. I, want you to be, I won't feel yeah. like I'm a success until you're more successful than I was. That was a working class kind of conception. And middle class fathers say, I'm your role model be just like me. Yeah. And that was, and, and so Senate and Cobb read it from the position of the father vis-a-vis -vis their children. But what you're doing is you're saying that the, the same thing happens with the sons. The sons say, I don't want to be, it's a working class conceit mm. to say, I don't want to be like my father. Mm. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to do it differently. I come from a, I, I, I came from a, a family with, that was working class that made it into the middle class. My father gave me both. My father said, "This it ends here with me. I'm going to be connected to my son, and I I won't be I won't feel like success unless you're more successful than me." I got this all the time, but I would never say that to my son. You know, not that I would hold myself up as some paragon that he's supposed to emulate, but but I would never say, "Don't be like me," right? And so you know, you think about think about. Poor Donald Jr. or or the Madoff boys. If you've seen that the movie that the, 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 the movie about Madoff with Robert De Niro, um, they idolized their father. They wanted to be just like him. So there's a real so that, so from the point of view for the sons, which is what you have, you have a sense of what fatherhood is. And so these boys, when they become fathers, say, "I'm not," you know, their children are babies. I'm not going to be the father my father was. Right. That's I. I that's yeah. what I hear you yeah. say. Yeah. It stops with me. Yeah. yeah I say give it ten or fifteen years. It's like, bingo. <laughs> well, right. Well, whether they'll leave or not. That's right. Yeah. Especially if they can't find work. Mm. That's a, it's. It, but but aspirationally, they, really they have, have no been. intention of leaving. They have at that yeah. at this point. Yes. Maybe their fathers didn't do it. Yeah. And maybe also their fathers were physically absent. Not not. Some yeah, they got, they're gone, yeah. They're, they, no, they don't know but that. These, they they, don't they, know. But these young men have 
only inference at this point. Yeah, some. So who knows what's, yeah. what's ahead? Mm. There, it, and mm. were their fathers physically present when they were infants? They wouldn't remember it, but do they know about that? No, some altogether were not there. Like I said, they mean, never knew who mm. the. Oh, they had to go home and say to the mother, "Did I have a father? I mean, can you identify a father?" They did not know their fathers. They I mean, know. also it's a big thing now where others <laughs> can then have got accused of having provoked, like you know, all kinds of identity sort of like a crisis. I want to know who is my father. Mm. And I can't be using, I think, the issue of culture, my mother's name. I want to use my father's name. And it's another big project that I'm doing, like around surnames and, mm. and meanings like associated with that. I would not want my children to be using my mother's surname. It's a case. My ancestors would be turning from their graves. And you know, so it has led me to all these like, other questions. And then also, I mean, I guess that she of the mother now having to say, I also do not know who your father is. Mm. And then it's like, who am I? You know. And the comments, questions? I don't know how you can take something that's as complex as this and organize it in some way. I was thinking, it's just a seems overwhelming to me. So I'm hoping I mean, I mean, that's, some feedback yeah, on this. It is. I mean, and not only, okay, so, so you have, you have the, the, the boys' narratives and, and the, the boys' pictures. Then they tell you a story. Then they tell the, the focus group. And you don't do this once. You yeah. do this a whole bunch of time that's over right. eight years. That's right. And then right? it's like, oh, you know, it's like where you start to organize it. Yeah, well, that's why he's here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a fascinating study. It is. <laughs>